Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the last uh, video on Descartes. Uh, so we now jump from the second meditation all the way to the sixth meditation. Um, and in this very small snippet that we read, just one paragraph, um, Descartes is presenting an argument for why the body may also exist. And then as such, we exist as two different things, the mind and the body. And obviously this in essence, give us the, gives us the argument for dualism. Um, so where did we leave off? Uh, so um, as I said, we go from the second to the sixth meditation here. So if you get a little bit confused, that's probably why. There's a lot of argument and justification between these two points. Um, so look, seek further clarity through you know reading the text yourself if you'd like to. Um, it's not particularly long, uh, or you know going on Spark Notes or some other form of picking up the uh, bits in between. They're not crucial though. So really the things that we really need um, to prepare us for the exam are all within this one paragraph. We just have to unpack it a little bit. Uh, if you remember, Descartes finished the second meditation stating that only, uh, not only did he exist as a mind, but that the mind and mental phenomena, and by that remember he, he uses the phrase mental scrutiny, the act of thinking, um, we're better known than the physical world, as the physical world is always changing. He uses the wax argument for this, if you remember. Um, wax is always changing, and because of that, we can't actually define wax by any of its physical properties. If I say it's solid, then when I see wax in a liquid form, and I say, well, that's still wax, obviously that leads to problems. The wax must actually exist as a mental phenomenon, as, as an idea, something that we are able to wrap our head, heads around but that don't actually exist uh, physically. So the idea of wax does not exist. So that's where we left off um, with him, in his mind at least, proving that not only does the mind exist, which he did earlier, um, but that the mind was actually better known than the physical world. So with the sixth meditation, uh, we've got just one paragraph, like I said, um, and he is going to be invoking God as his witness. So atheists... Uh, you know, buckle your seatbelts. Um, uh, but uh, what he's really going to be pointing out is um, that the mind and the body are two distinct things. And by, you know, I'll expand on this as we read, but that really means that they can't be one and the same. We must exist as two separate things. If they are so distinct that they cannot be considered in any way the same thing, well then, there must be two things. It's the only way that you can explain it, according to, to Descartes at least. So, uh, reading books out, highlighters and pens at the ready, you should be on a page with the number 54 in the top left hand corner. Remember, um, we are only reading the paragraph that I've put in little uh, L brackets there for you. It's starting with, first, I know that everything which I clearly and distinctly understand. Okay, so, here we go, we should be done with this one pretty quickly. First, I know that everything which I clearly and distinctly understand is capable of being created by God, so as to correspond exactly with my understanding of it. So, in essence, what he's saying is, if God exists, uh, and let's assume that God does, instead of an evil deceiver, we have a benevolent God. If God exists, God would be able to create a world where, when I look at something, say the computer screen in front of me, that is the actual thing. When I think about the computer screen, when I use my mental scrutiny to understand it, that is actually in line with the real thing. God does have that power to make the world around us match perfectly with our ideas of the world around us. Um, hence the fact that I can clearly and distinctly understand one thing apart from another is enough to make me certain that these two things are distinct, since they are capable of being separated at least by God. So what he's saying here is if I can define one thing from another, if I know the difference between a cat and a dog, um, and my mind can make them distinct, then God also has the power to create a world where those two things are distinct. So what he's saying here is they are distinct in two ways. They are distinct in my mind in that the idea of a dog is different to the idea of a cat, even though physically they're very similar, four legs, furry, house pets, um, whole range of things. Uh, God is able to create a world that will perfectly match and mirror my my mental scrutiny. Okay, um, The question of what kind of power is re required to bring about such a separation does not affect the judgment that the two things are distinct. 
Um, so here he's just really saying that he's not going to dip his toe into how God can create this world or how God wields God's power. Um, uh, instead, he's just going to sort of brush over that uh, question of how God does what God does and just accept that God does. Um, thus, simply by knowing that I exist and seeing at the same time that absolutely nothing else belongs to my nature or essence except that I am a thinking thing, I can infer correctly that my essence consists solely in the fact that I am a thinking thing. This idea of essence is a really important one. Um, you know, if you've never heard people use it or you're unfamiliar with it, to say your essence, this is what makes you, you. Um, you know, and uh, I know in the last recording I talked about, you know, um, Descartes getting a haircut uh, and that sort of idea. The reason that people can get a haircut um, or color their hair or whatever and still be perceived as the same person is because a change in hair length does not change your essence. What makes you, you. Okay? Um, and so what Descartes is saying here is that his essence consists solely in the fact that he is a thinking thing. So what makes him, him? Where is the real René Descartes? It is in his mind. His mind is, again, connecting to what we uh, read in the at the end of the second meditation his mind is his primary form of existence that is where he truly is in the next era of study with personal identity we'll be talking about this idea as well what is it that makes you you um, and we discussed the ship of theseus a little bit in class the other day um, that idea of well what makes something something um, what is the essence of descartes he says it is as a thinking thing um, or, we might say, as a mind. It is true that I may have, or to anticipate, that I certainly have a body that is very closely joined to me. So, he's sort of, you know, flirting with scepticism here, but he's kind of given up scepticism, if we're going to be honest. Um, he say I may have a body, and then in brackets he's saying, actually, you know, let's just go for it. I certainly have a body. Um, now remember, there's some justification for this in earlier parts of the reading. If I'm being totally frank, it's not particularly good, <laughs> but um, he has reached the conclusion here that, uh, or at least he will by the end of this meditation, that his body most certainly does exist. But is that where his essence is? Well, no. Okay, uh, But it is very closely joined to him, as he says. Notice this word here, joined. You can only join two separate things. If something is the same, then it's not joined. Okay, it is just that. So the fact that he's saying joined means that we're connecting two separate things. Remember, this is him coining the argument for dualism. Um, <clears throat> uh, but nevertheless, on the one hand, I have a clear and distinct idea of myself insofar as I am simply a thinking, non-extended thing. And on the other hand, I have a distinct idea of body in so far as this is simply an extended not thinking thing or non thinking thing. Uh, we'll read the last sentence and then I'll explain. And accordingly, it is certain that I am really distinct from my body and can exist without it. So, what Descartes is pointing out here is, and this uh, goes back to one of the earlier recordings for Descartes, he's using a philosophical form of argument here where you say uh, all X's are Y's. Um, Z is not a Y, therefore Z is not an X. Okay, that sort of idea. Um, and what he's saying is uh, the mind exists as a non-extended thinking thing, whereas the body exists as a extended non-thinking thing. So he's saying that their definitions are opposite to each other. Both exist, but they cannot possibly be the same thing. Something cannot be both, you know, red and green. Uh, something cannot be both hot and cold at the same time. We might make something hot and then let it cool, but they can't be two opposing things at the same time. Descartes perceives himself as having a body and also having a mind at the same time, but those two things are very different. His mind is uh, non-extended, as in it doesn't take up any physical space, and it is thinking, whereas his body does take up physical space, and it is not thinking. Therefore, they must be two separate things, not the same. They're not connected. Remember, this is not uh, property dualism, um, uh, where the mind comes from the body. 
this is the mind is different from the body. And remember for Descartes, the mind is actually the primary form of existence. So because we cannot define them as the same thing, then obviously we cannot see them as the same thing. They must be two distinct things. Uh, now, where to now? Um, this part of the reading was added uh, relatively uh, not a long time ago, so the textbook um, doesn't have a section on it. What I do want you to do, though, is it's a very short section. Read it a couple of times to make sure you're wrapping your head around it. Are there any problems with Descartes' argument here? Particularly, is he not making the same mistake that he was at first making with the wax? Um, which is that, essentially, he's saying that, well, because physical properties are different, then um, they can't be defined in a certain way. Well, physical properties can change. We still have the idea of something. More pertinent, though, is, is he just falling for the evil deceiver trick again? Um, you know, at what point did he just dispose of the evil deceiver here? How does he know he has a body? How does he know that it's not a illusion or an illusion of the evil deceiver? Um, when did he become so confident in the existence of the physical world? Like I said, there is some justification for this in the parts between the second and the sixth meditation, but a lot of philosophers argue that the justifications really aren't satisfactory. Jump online, have a look at some of the criticisms for Descartes' argument here in the sixth meditation to help you understand it. But for you, uh, you need to think about, well, does Descartes do enough to prove that the body must be something distinct from the mind? Do you agree with this definition argument that he uses? You know, the X's and Y's idea. Um, and is it at all possible that they could actually just be the same thing? Um, is Descartes sort of falling for the linguistic trap here where he's trying to describe things in a physical way that aren't physical, and so he falls down? Uh, and he feels like they're two different things, when actually they might not be, it might just be a restriction of his language that they can't be described in any other way. Difficult things to think about, but this is now the end of our first reading, so hooray! Um, uh, hopefully it's been thought-provoking for you. Uh, some of you may be feeling like substance dualism is the way to go. Some of you probably think that it's uh, pretty far-fetched. Next up will be David Armstrong. Um, who responds directly to Descartes, and also we'll be looking at uh, a modern-day materialist, um, Daniel Dennett, and how he responds to Descartes, because he is quite scathing, and essentially breaks Descartes' argument down into the fact that he's simply overcomplicating things. Um, there is no magical other thing that exists in us, the mind, that does, that's not really there. Um, you know, it's sort of like saying that there's a magical property inside you that allows your eyes, which just receive light, to then create understanding. It's nothing magical. It's just your brain doing what your brain does. Daniel Dennett, uh, yeah, Daniel Dennett, sorry, says that our mind is just that. It's just our brain. We don't need to add some sort of mystical other thing to it to allow us to understand it. Um, if anything, we're just overcomplicating it. We're putting ghosts in the machine. Um, all right, I hope you've enjoyed Descartes. Uh, we'll have criticism of him coming up soon, as I just said. Um, and yeah, enjoy. Bye.